let's uh let's let's take a look here and let's see how we can improve like because we should be like you know you're bronze but then they're also bronze like we should find plenty of mistakes to punish the malphite and it's a, exactly like Lissek said in chat just now like no matter what elo you're in this is this shit is always going to happen now what happened like what the difference is and how you can climb is like how we make of it so what i'm going to teach you i can't tell you hey you're going to win every single game with this one simple trick no ain't no shit like that but what i'm going to do is provide you with ways with tools with you know micro and macro so you can give yourself the highest impact possible in each and every single one of your games and give you a much better chance incrementally as you get better of winning each game especially at each tier that's important so let's take a look here i, di I didn't watch jungle in this game either because i was making coffee so i had afk for a bit <laughs> i mean they didn't invade your jungle so that's why i'm not even, like i'm not gonna harp on on stuff like that because in the grand scheme of things, like your mid laner warded this. So, I mean, that's all that's needed. We can track Vi's pathing from here. But, let's take a look here. Now, this is bronze, so you got some stupid shit like Fjord Jungle. I mean, is what it is. Oh, yeah. So, let's take a look at how you... So, you build up some Fury. We should be looking to trade into Malphite with this Fury and fight him early game. So, so far, like, you built up to literally 100% Fury. Trade him as, like, basically as soon as you get a couple autos in, start trading the Malphite. We need to start whittling his health pool down. Because it has been 27 seconds of lane. We could have got, like, we could have spun, like, here. Like, auto, and then spin through this first minion. Get two, three, four autos. Go back to the wave, and then we chunk the Malphite's health bar. Then we go back, we, you know, rebuild some, you know, more fury. You know, we get closer to level two. Look to spin on him again. Trade with him again. Try to hit that level two. But when we're not taking these trades level one, it, it you know, one, your wave isn't going to be shoving as fast, so it's going to be harder to do, like, a two-wave crash. And two, we're, we're just, like, not utilizing our spin damage and trading them. Like, he got two Qs on us before we did a... Hold on. Yes. Quite literally, you auto-attacked him one time, I can tell, because you only have one stack of lethal tempo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we, we gotta take extended trades. Spin. Auto. 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 Like, this guy started Q. He didn't even start E, so he's not even reducing your attack speed. So we gotta force the issue on the Malphite. So that is three auto attacks on Malphite this lane. And then look at your wave state. Now we're stuck in this bad wave state. Do you know why this happens? It's because you yeah. didn't spin and trade level one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back to it. And I'm going to re-explain it in a way of wave management. So your spin level one does 95 damage. Your auto attack does 81, assuming you don't crit. So if you spin on Malphite... You know, you, we walk up, we spin through Malphite, and we autumn a few times. You know we also just did? Every minion that you touch with your spin, one auto, two auto, three auto, four auto, five auto, six auto. It's like when you spin through this whole wave, it's like you just auto attack the entire wave once. So that's six auto attacks worth of damage. Honestly, even a little bit more than auto attack, right? It just spins even more than auto. And that is the wave, like, pushing potential. So, we're going to take a look at my game today versus, and we're going to take a look at my game today literally versus Kesante. I mean, I had a couple of Kesante matchups. Uh, they all go the exact same, and I usually kill them level two because no Kesante can match me early. They got to play like a little bit. I'm some Fury, and I'm looking to actually take the fight to them. And I'm staying ahead. I'm getting, you know, big trades. And I actually dodged the Kaysante Q. So I just end up going for the all-in and killing him. And this, this isn't anything crazy. Right? 
we just we built up a little bit of trade. Now we can take a look at the uh, the previous game versus Kisante. And it's gonna look uh, very similar. So. So this line uh, against this is the previous game against against Kesante. Now we didn't kill this guy, but we're looking to build a little bit of fury. And against Kesante specifically, um, you know, waiting for his Q cooldown, right? So as soon as it does a Q, I'm like, okay, I'm going in. And you know, so I'm like hitting the wave on the way in. And even though I know I'm not going to be getting an all win, I want to be using my spin as much as possible to get early damage on. And I'm gonna be using this to get the, the wave crash in. And again, you see how I'm getting, this is a second trade at level one. And again, it only ends up being two autos because I wasn't able to spin through and behind him. Kesante is able to just, you know, auto, like Q, slow me down. But what this does is I'm able to push for level two, I'm able to get full control of the lane. And at this point, I probably am just gonna just auto and maybe spin through here, yep. And just shove this all the way in. Now, in bronze, you're not going to have to worry about doing anything like advanced tech, like what I'm doing. Like in bronze, they won't be thinking, oh, hey, you know, they're, they're looking to punish this by holding the wave here. And so I punish it by pulling the wave and getting the pushback to me. All right, so you won't have to worry about doing any of this. Just know, like, push for those early trades. They're just going to let it crash, especially in Malphite. You know, Kesante maybe has a little bit more, um, you know, they can do in the matchup. But, yeah, let me lower cam. So, again, like, you got to be trading the Malphite, right? You, you want to beat him. You want to outplay him. You got to trade. You got to fight. The more fighting that you're doing, the better that you're going to do. Straight up. So, like, before level 2, we only got a single auto attack, not even a spin on Malphite. The problem with waiting to level 2 to spin on him is, one, now that you're level 2 and he's level 1, he's not going to walk up. Fight him while you're level 1, and then hit that level 2, and then surprise him with it, and spin on him, and then because we took a, did a lot of damage to him level 1, we hit that level 2, our health is lower, so we straight up gain more attack damage from our Q, and you know, a lot of people, especially in Bronze, they're not going to know experience, they're not going to be like, oh, hey, he hit level 2, they might not even realize, and you're just going to be able to walk up and beat him up. And then, just like I said with the wave management, we weren't able to get that, you know, second wave all the way into turret. So it ends up being in a little bit of a rough spot. Still able to get a little bit of a trade like that. Pretty good. So when you hit level 3, we should anticipate level 3. And we should have our Q leveled up literally right now before we start our auto attack. Because our attack damage and critical strike chance are snapshotted right here. So level up that Q when you know you're hitting level 3. And watch this motion. So you're going to auto attack this minion. And we lost control of our character for a second while we were leveling up. Don't lose control of your character. Okay, I mean this guy's in it. You just walk up and auto him, right? Uh... Okay, I think we could have, before I hit level 3, we could have just flash and autoed and kill them. And even trading one for one, I would say is worth. Alright, so walking with wave, this is good. Um, okay, so first of all, walk, like you were walking with wave, this is perfect. Walk all the way with the wave. You want to be on time here, hitting the wave. And if Jack shows up here, walk up and hit the Jacks. Burn his Counter-Strike, walk into his body, you know, on the hitbox, and then spin out. So, this is really good. You see, look at the spacing between you and Jax. Uh, you have 175 auto attack range. Jax has 125. So, there is melee spacing to be had against the Jax matchup. 
So you could be attacking from out here and you keep them over here and you can build up some fury for free. That being said, you want to walk up and auto attack Jax and force his counter strike, force the issue against him. We need to be getting leads against Jax. Because late game, I mean, we're you know. I mean, this Counter Strike goes to like a zero second cooldown, and he's got five billion armor and one shots you. Mm -hmm. He's pretty broken. So this is good spacing here. Love it. So like, I mean, this. Okay. So we space out here. So we take a step back because we just used our auto attack. Now that our auto attack is back off of cooldown after lasting that minion. We should be looking forward, walk up, auto attacking. What we're looking to abuse against Jax, your spin, 12 second cooldown, his counter strike, 17 second cooldown, and his counter strike cooldown doesn't start, like it doesn't start ticking down from the 17 until he reactivates that counter strike. So it's really like an 18 or 19 second cooldown. And then of course your spin could be reduced from spin or from crits. So we auto attack once here, auto attack until you force his counter strike. Okay. So like you walking up and auto attacking once, not good. He's got two grass stacks on you. I mean, we've got two stacks of lethal. Hey, send it. So right here, you auto attack this minion. And then you stayed in range of Jax. So when we auto attack, we got a space away from the Jax. So you did it before and it was really good. Alchemist, thanks for the Twitch Prime for 44 months. Thank you. To be auto attacked and you spaced away from Jax before, but on this one, we walked back into him before our auto attack was back up. So space away a little bit more and then walk back into him with our auto attack and cooldown. Force his counter strike, force that cooldown. So we walk back and we didn't auto because our auto attack's on cooldown. He gets an auto for free. We should spin out here. Try to get the spin damage on the way out. So here. This is how you should click. So he starts that counter strike. Instead of just spinning away instantly, Jax is forced. You see how he can't reactivate his counter strike? Jax is forced to sit in his counter strike for at least one second. So during that one second, take your take your body, take it into his hitbox here, and then spin out. That way you get the 95 spin damage on the way out. So okay. to do that, just click behind him. So do a click behind, then spin out here. Don't even need to auto since he's already, uh, you know, sorry, counter striking, he's gonna dodge it. That being said, there is a bug right now where if you auto attack into his counter strike, you will still stack lethal. So hey, no. I, I'm not saying abuse bugs, but hey, I, I may I may have done it once or twice on purpose. Mm. So <clears throat> yeah, there's that. I mean, we we just I mean he he jumped on us and we just sat here. Nah, so, I want to see it. I know I messed up. Right I wanted the CS and I didn't expect him to hit me that hard. You rat bastard. Yeah. So, like, if this was giving us level 2 and we were looking to fight after, you know, maybe I can see it. But we gotta respect his level 2. And we, we're just letting him hit us, like. Yeah. So, I mean, look at this matchup. There were, there was a couple things you're looking to do. Now, going back to the very beginning. So you remember how I was saying, like, you know, be aggressive versus Jax, and then look to look to auto attack him and burn his counter strike. So when you burn his counter strike, you look to spin away, right? You know what you could be doing with that spin to make it like even better. Hmm. You auto attack Jax. You force his counter strike. And then when he spin away, spin through his minions. So you could be spinning from here through like here and be spinning through like three melees. And guess what? That's as if you auto attacked those melees three times. Now you're three auto attacks ahead on the jacks on the shove-in. 
See what I'm saying? So now we could still try to fight for level two advantage. Auto, auto, auto. And if he walks up to us with no counter strike cooldown, we keep our HP and we have our spin faster than this counter strike. We can force this all in, especially with lethal versus grasp. As soon as we get to six autos of lethal tempo, we, we become cracked out. You know, we're like, you know, fucking Thor. You know, wielding lightning and shit. I mean, that's what the, you know, the on hit from lethal looks like to me. Like, we're fucking zapping them. Alright, <clears throat> so, most Renekton's will take Resolve, and when they take Resolve, they usually take Bone Plating. Yep. So, here's what I like to do. Walk up, hit their Bone Plating. And honestly, even before Laning Phase starts, if you are watching this... You can sometimes burn their bone pudding even before the lane, before the lane starts. So you get fury for free. Okay, this is fun. Okay, nice. You dodged his Q. Honestly, if you dodge his Q, he's got no abilities, right? Spin in. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, here obviously we gotta abuse the spin that his Q cooldown. Mm-hmm. Right. If anything, mm -hmm. he misses a Q, walk up and take away his bone plating. So when you approach a lane, always left click on your opponent because you'll be able to see, like, in the, it'll show up in the top left here uh, when you're in game, like where my mouse is. You'll be able to see all of his little buffs and debuffs and show up, and bone plating shows up as one of them. Sure. Yeah. So, okay, we spun and we spun just for a minion. Always gotta, you know, right? If we're gonna spin, spin on him too. But we shouldn't spin into Renekton when he has bone pudding, go and proc it first. So we proc it here. And I mean, it, this uh, this is kind of the same story, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've done one auto attack. I mean, the, the, the minions come here like what, 135 or some shit? 138? I mean, we, we've done one auto attack on the Renekton in, you know, 15, 20 seconds of laning. Even when he queues and wastes his cooldown right in front of us. We gotta do better on... And honestly, if he fights you right here, even with his Fury, you beat him level 1. Use your potion, auto attack, walk him down the lane, and abuse that lethal tempo. It is broken. Level 1. If someone doesn't have lethal and you have lethal and you're able to straight up all in them level one, like a hundred health, you know, hundred, hundred percent HP to hundred percent HP, you will beat them against 99% matchups. Okay. So, uh, we're in a good spot. We're level two. I mean, you already know what I'm looking for here, right? Yeah. So you should be moving your character below, autoing this. And looking to see if this Renekton walks up into your spin flash range. Mm hmm Okay, he didn't walk up. I mean, honestly, here. Spin. You'll be able to get to right here. Flash auto. If he gets crit, he's instantly dead. If he mm -hmm. doesn't get crit, then our next auto will kill him and that will force him to flash. And if he doesn't flash, he dies. If he does flash, guess what we do next? We sh like we got the wave shoved in, and we just ghost at him under turret, and we get that last auto attack on him while he has no flash, and he just dies. I've done this a thousand times. Okay. So we got to understand max range spin flash. Go, go in a dummy, or go in a practice tool, spawn a dummy, and just practice max range spin flash. That is an absolute opportunity to, to abuse it. That being said, if we took more trades early before this wave kind of crashes in naturally, it'll be better. Also, look at your wave and where it ends up. It's not crashed all the way in into turret. It's like just outside of turret. Again, that's because you're not taking enough trades level one. Your spin will naturally shove that wave and it counts as multiple bonus autos on the wave. So that's why the wave ends up here. Okay. So before this trundle... Alright, and stop this. I never want to see this again. You're spinning on just minions 
And now Renekton doesn't have to worry about you at all. But mm -hmm. when you had spin, you had the threat of potentially spinning on Renekton and just critting his face in. And now you don't. So, if I lose the CS, it's okay? If you lose the CS, it's okay, but learn how to CS without using it. Wait yeah, a second. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, sometimes I just don't hit as hard as I think I hit, and then like, that happens and I just I spin to get the CS. That's what it was. Yep, yeah, we're looking over uh, Codex right now, Emmy. I know I usually don't don't coach on stream, but Codex was um <clears throat> he was not having a good day, and I mean you know, you know how I am. I I, I feel bad. Yeah, I, I want to make sure like I've been working with Codex. I want to make sure that he's set up. But feel I mean, better, Emmy. Everybody in chat's enjoying it, so we get to see um. I'm coaching. So, is this a trundle specific mechanic thing? You can stun, you can spin while you're airborne from the pillar. So that's to be instant. Also, we want to be running directly away from our opponents as fast as possible back to our turret. If we did that, this Renekton doesn't get in range. Okay. But because we take this pathing, so look at Renekton. So if we spun here in a straight line, Renekton doesn't get on us. But because we go here, and we're taking a line around, so Renekton can just path here in a straight line, and we're taking this path around for their distance to go. Mm -hmm. and this is why he got in range of us. Whereas there's no chance, especially with uh, your ghost on, they would have been able to get in range. Okay, so let's talk about this. Like, already I'm seeing a mistake level one. So, your spin. When you're in, an, when in a trade, you get one spin in a trade level, like early levels, right? It's a 12 second cooldown and we don't have any crit. So in order for us to, you know, reset our cooldown, I mean, it's, it's just a long time. So mm -hmm. with Trinmere early game is very important that we use our spin for dual purpose. Either, you know, A, you know, spinning in to extend a trade or to even start a trade if they're, you know, playing back here, we want to force it. Or B to, you know, get out of the trade at the end. But if we're spinning just for damage, when we're looking to, like, looking to fight him, and he's already on top of us, that's very bad. Okay. So, he's walking us here, and then, I mean, he's literally behind us. Yeah. So, we could just auto him, right? Could have walked up and autoed him, yeah. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> I will tell you without a doubt, <clears throat> if you guys just sit here and auto each other, you will blast this guy, and you will beat him so freaking easy. Not even close. Like, you will have, like, 300 HP left, and he'll have zero. Okay. So, like, I mean, uh, it, it's already looking like that, right? <laughs> 600 HP to 480? Like, you should just go sound scout right now, he's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy is, like, so fucking dead. And imagine if we saved our spin here, then we wouldn't mm -hmm. even have to ghost. Like, he would just... Yeah. Like, this guy is actually just at level 1 because he positioned here and walked at you with fucking Q. Like, so what Rumble has to do against the Trinmere, he has to sit back like a bitch and press E on you when you try to engage on him. That's how he's supposed to play the matchup. This guy, he played it like a maniac, and you should have punished, but he didn't. Okay, you know, this guy's name is Marky. I, I think his name is actually Maniac. That, that, that is just crazy. Okay, so where, where does this go on? So we should kill them level one. We killed them at like, you know, spinning in on our second time. Playing aggressive. All right, so you, you, got a, you got first blood and you got the wave crashed in. What are we doing? Why are we still here? Goodbye. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we got the kill, we got the wave shoved in, now we reset. Because otherwise, we're going to be sitting here doing nothing for like 20 seconds. We might as well back, buy items, and get back to lane, because it's a cannon wave on this third wave. Ain't no way he's pushing that shit in, especially as a rumble. So, what do we do? Okay, it looks like we just sit here for 20 seconds and don't do anything. Okay, we walk down for Ramus. 
unlucky that we couldn't get the, like getting to the kill and double buffs would have been good but definitely here like we got to be understanding our reset timers right so anytime you're getting killed early and you shove the wave in the reason you're hard shoving that wave is to get the wave to bounce back to you once the wave is mm. bounced back into you you know what that means that means you have time to reset anytime you can go back and buy items without losing any experience or very minimal experience very good good now, uh, something sneaky that you can do is your lethal tempo will last for six seconds. Mm -hmm. So if this Nasus walks up and your lethal tempo is still going, you can auto attack and try to keep your lethal tempo like active. I, I try. It's it's difficult, but I've been trying lately because you, you you mentioned that the last time we had coaching. Yep. Okay, so a little bit slow on, on the shoving. If we're gonna do two wave shove, should shove it a little bit harder. But hey, you know what? This is the best thing you've done the whole time. So you don't do this. There is very specific times when I'm gonna be doing this. Um, you you don't even worry about this. All right. All right. Don't do this. Like right, you'll see me do it on stream sometimes but i have a very specific purpose in mind of what i'm gonna do um it is beyond what i'm gonna teach you here because we're still at a fundamental level of what we're trying to learn let's keep it nice and easy now this is a good work we'll say that because we'll be able to see you know mumu on his full clear up here well ahead of time so very good and we so we, what we can tell from this is that Rumble started bot side. Mm-hmm. He's pathing top. Yep, so right now we're just waiting to set up the all-in. So, um, one thing here, when you're against Nasus or these matchups like, you know, Malphite, Orn, uh, yeah, any tank, basically, where we're trying to set up this all-in position, if, look at how many extra minions he has, bro. So you have six, he has four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. He basically has a double stack wave. Like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We gotta thin this out. So, do you know how many minions extra that Nasus needs to have here in this position on lane in order to push into you? No. Zero. So, while it's on his side of the lane, no bonus minions are required. So, it's still nice to have extra minions in this spot to be able to shove in because you want to get into this spot as quickly as possible but if it gets there too quick and you don't thin out these minions then guess what the nasa is going to walk up he's level four you're level three because you haven't thin out minions and he's going to be able to fight your ass even as a nasa mm -hmm. because you have so many minions you have the level advantage so in this position you have to like you got to play a balance when you're trying to set up this freeze which this is great wave management by you so far. The next step in learning what you need to do when identifying this situation, he has so many extra minions, is one, spam Q, get your health to full, that way you can set up your all in here with full HP, full fury. Number two, you need to be thinning out these minions. So have it pushed you, but not push so hard that he's able to actually collapse all the way in the turn. So that's what happens. Let's see what happens. So you're thinning out a little bit. And you see how, like, he has four, five, six, seven, eight minions over now. And, and they still got the next wave past here. Mm hmm And we just took a third of our health. Yeah. Yeah. We just did not thin the wave enough. And this is why we're taking all this HP. So mm -hmm. if this Nasus, you know, wasn't bronze, he would just walk up and wither your ass and just fight you right here. Force you to spin. And then he built the crash next wave in. Mm -hmm. He goes and wards. He doesn't wither you. He just kind of lets you do this. But you lost half your health. If this guy was smart, he'd walk up and just fight your ass. He'd be auto attacking. He'd be shoving this wave in. But let's see what happens. He lets you get away with this. You should be using potion at this point. Because, I mean, you've got the wave where you want it. You want to sip the Owen, and you just can't. I mean, we gotta learn to thin out that wave. So, okay. if we thin out that wave, we kill the Nasus, easy peasy. 
right? All right. All right. Perfect. All right. So, you know, I, I think I sent you a video before in the past, or maybe you mm -hmm. watched it, you know, my complete guide to, you know, beating the shit off board. Try to, like, walk into his queue and then walk out. It looked like this is what you're trying to do. I so was. So this is yeah. good. So try to walk he hit in. me, though. So let me tell you where you went wrong. Here, you see how you're walking at it like a diagonal away from more this you should be walking directly away okay so you know when you're doing your movements away don't do them diagonal do it directly away yeah and all right of course like in this case you walk back in a little bit too even then you still might have been clipped oh, yeah he clipped me and then um just know read mordekaiser's passive so hitting three basic mm -hmm. abilities or attacks grants him a stack of darkness rise. If he gets three stacks, it activates that passive, which allows him to just freaking own you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you get hit by the Q, don't go in instantly. Wait out the four second period before spinning him because you don't want him having his darkness rise activated within the two autos. You want him to have to auto you three times. Activated because the earlier he gets it started, the faster he ramps up and gets that percent max melt health, you know, meltation on you. Mm -hmm. So be careful about this spin in here, because if this guy was a little bit more confident, he uses potion and he just autos you to death and sits in this wave. Okay. And actually, he actually looked at it, but I mean, this hamburger we're talking about ain't no cheeseburger. Okay, and then. We can't be using spin on just minions. So I see, like, you you saw, like, the minions here, and you're like, okay, let me try to, you know, get spin on this minion and hit Morda at the same time. But let me yeah. show you the difference. The difference okay. is your spacing. Yeah, that's too far back. Yeah, so Mordekaiser has no Q right now, right? He just uses uh -huh. Q, six second cooldown. So instead of you auto attacking this minion from here, if yep. you move your character here, you have way more pressure on this guy, and maybe he doesn't walk up for these minions. Or, if he does, because he's bronze, you know what we can do? We walk here, we auto, and then we spin. Okay, well, we have three seconds for a spin, but still. Same concept applies. You walk here, auto attack, and then when your spin's up, you spin through, and you spin through not only this minion, but also this minion as well, from this location. We mess him up. Mm -hmm. But we miss this minion, and then we don't get the hit because we're just playing in Narnia. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, like, definitely work in your spacing. And even here, right? You know you're about to hit level 2 off this minion, right? So, in like, I'll be honest. I, I don't know very many bronze players that know when you're going to hit level 2. You know, I just don't think it's something that a lot of bronze players uh, hold their mind. So, position here, hit your level two, and then be in a better spot to all in. So when you're in a position of pressure in a matchup, you gotta posture aggressively. And if they don't respect you, you punish them. If they do respect you, you punish them because they can't get these minions without respecting uh, you, right? Yeah. So, win-win. But when we play from back here... Okay, and you see this little movement you did? So, you hit level 2. And then... Let me click on your character. So, you're not leveling up your, your Q instantly. And your level 2 full Fury Trendmare, almost full HP, you should be clicking in to the Mord. But your first reaction, and this is a habit that you need to break. Honestly, this is a habit that you need to break, and probably 90% of Twitch chat needs to break right now. They level up, and they don't, they, they lose control of their character completely to the void, and they end up doing a circle in place while they level up their building. Oh, most of you guys do this, that uh, coach. Literally, that's what you did. You just did, did a little circle. I, I'm not even trying. A, a lot of you guys do this. 
<laughs> I so totally instead did. of walking forward and just spinning on him and killing his ass because you're level two full fury and he's level one, he's actually still walking up for this minion. He doesn't even know you're level two. You just walk up and kill this guy. So if we had been walking forward the entire time, we're in such a better position. Mm -hmm. But because we didn't walk up early, instead of being through and behind him here and getting a lot more auto attacks and probably burning his flash, now we're back here. Getting one auto attack and then running away. It, it's, it's that simple. Anyways, talk to you later. Bye, everybody.